Hello and welcome to Lords of Hellas in about three minutes. It is a game for one to four players. It has a solo mode. Playing time is around two hours. It is a complex game. In ancient Greece, it is a time of gods, monsters, and most importantly, heroes. But this isn't the ancient Greece of tradition. Here, heroes wield arcane technologies and battle against cybernetically enhanced monstrosities. You will build monuments to the gods, wage wars against your fellow heroes, go on quests, wield powerful artifacts, and god-given magic. But only one player can be the true hero of Greece. There are four distinct ways to win this game. First, you must control two full regions on the board. Secondly, you control five different regions that contain a temple. You can also win by defeating three different monsters in heroic combat. And finally, you can win if you control a region with a fully built monument after three turns of it being built. Competitive. Only one player can be the true hero of Greece. Area control. Having armies on the board and controlling regions is very important. Card management. Your combat cards are important for both battling monsters and fighting wars. Player turn. On your turn, you can take any and all of the basic actions, and then one advanced action. The basic actions can be done in any order, but the advanced action is always last. The basic actions are move your hero as many regions as their speed score. If you're in a region with a quest, you're able to start that quest or move further along a quest. You can move a number of armies equal to your leadership score one region. You can activate artifacts, but once they are used, they do not recharge for a while. And you can send a priest to a monument and gain the associated advantages. Once you are done with your basic actions, you take your special action. Each special action, once used, is covered up and cannot be used again for a while. Prepare allows you to heal injuries to your hero, gain combat cards, or recruit armies near your hero. Hunt allows you to attack a monster in your region. The combat is quite involved, but in essence you have to play specific combat cards to damage each part of the monster and then defend its counterattacks. If you take too many injuries, you are forced to end the fight. Winning gives you major rewards. Usurp allows your hero to take over a region as long as they have the favor token of that region. Favor tokens are gained for completing quests and killing monsters. Build Temple allows you to place a temple in a temple region, which may trigger a blessing draft. You draw a number of blessing cards equal to the number of players plus one. Choose one and then pass them to the next player until all players have chosen one. Recruit allows you to put more troops on the board at cities you control and March allows you to move all your armies from one region to another. Finally, Build Monument adds one stage to a monument of your choice and resets the game a little. All artifacts refresh, special actions are renewed, and then an event is drawn and the monsters act. Once you have done your basic actions and a special action, it is the next player's turn. Why would you like this game? I'm a sucker for good looking games with great miniatures, and Lords of Hellas is suitably impressive on the table. But that wasn't the reason I backed it on Kickstarter. Where this game really shines is the variable win conditions and the action selection system. At any time, all four victory conditions are open and different players will be pushing for different goals. So you need to maintain an awareness of what other players are doing and a flexibility in how you react. The Blessing Draft, as well as the use of priests to gain powers from monuments, allow you to tailor your hero and develop your playstyle in the game organically. The single best thing about the game is the monster fighting system. It's a heck of a lot of fun and genuinely feels like you are this hero of ancient times taking down a big bad critter. However, it's not cheap and there's a heck of a lot of additional content coming out for this game, so getting it all is going to cost a fair bit of money. Money. There's also a lot of moving parts in the game and keeping track of them takes some getting used to. Its openness and multiple ways to win could be overwhelming to some players. If you like the ideas of Lords of Hellas, but want a game with less conflict and more focus on economy, I recommend Scythe. And for a much simpler game with a similar theme and ideas, I recommend Risk Godstorm.